Shalom. Today we're going to do another lesson in understanding Hebrew verb structure. This lesson will be about square root. It's not a math lesson. If you have been studying Hebrew for any amount of time, you know that most verb roots have three letters, but there are a few that actually have four letters, and they're called square roots, even in Hebrew. So the most common of these is this, kaf lamed, kaf lamed. Now, linguists back in the day generated another binyan outside of the seven that we have already learned, and they call this pil pail. The Hebrew grammars do not consider this to be a different binyan. They understand that it is four letters, but it's in the pl. And so we're going to see that the vowel structure resembles the vowel structure of the pl binyan. So if you're comparing in your mind the, the participle tense of, for example, the verb to speak, lidaber, the participle is going to be midaber, midaberet, midabrim, midabrot. Here we have the extra consonant inserted, but the vowels are very similar. Michalkel, michalkelet, michalkalim, michalklot. The past tense also. For debar, you would have debarti, debarta, debart, and this looks very similar. Kilkalti, kilkalta, kilkalt, kilkel, similar to debar, kilkala, kilkalnu, kilkaltem, kilkaten, kilkalu, kilkalu. Likewise, in the imperfect tense, where you would have adabar, tidabar, you have achalkel, tichalkel, tichalkeli, yichalkel, tichalkel, nichalkel, tichalkalu, tichalkelna, tichalkalu, tichalkelna. Of course, not all these forms are going to be found in Tanakh, but we do have a participle masculine tense from Malachi 3.2. Umi mechakel et yom bo'o. Here it's translated as withstand, who can withstand the day of his coming. There is another video that includes the verbs, which are kaflamid verbs, and I'll put a link to that video in the description box. What we see usually, lechakel, is to either to provide for or some sense of containing. I've pulled up the Blue Letter Bible breakdown here, and you can see that it is considered to be a pil pale verb, this extra binyan generated by linguists from days of yore, but continually adhered to by academics everywhere, except Israel. So here is a past tense, v'chil chalti otcha sham ki od chamesh shanim ra'a from Genesis 45, where Joseph is saying, it's conjugated in the past, it's translated into the future, I will provide for you, because there's five more years of famine. In 2 Samuel 19.32, we see a third person masculine, perfect. Speaking of Barzillai, an old man who had helped David out during his tough time, and it says, Vahu chilkel et hamelech. And he provided for the king. In 1 Kings 4 7, we have two forms third person plural, talking about the 12 governors that Solomon had, and they provided for the king. Vichil Kalu et Hamelech. In Nehemiah 9.21, here is a second person singular masculine. In a poem recounting the history of Israel, Va'arba'im shana kil kalatam ba'midbar. For 40 years, you provided for them. The final mem is the them. Otherwise, it's talking about Yehovah in the second person. Kil kalta, you provided ba'midbar in the desert. Looking at some future tense, some imperfect tense, Joseph is talking to his brothers. Up there, they've all come down to Egypt. Va'ata al tira'u. And now, don't be afraid. Anochi achal kel etchem. I will provide for all y'all. In Genesis 47, 12, we have a third person, masculine. Again, Joseph is providing for his family. 
ויכלכל יוסף את אביו ואת אחיו. He provided for his father and his brothers. And here is a third person, plural, imperfect, from Kings 8, 27. Solomon is speaking of the house which he built for the Lord. And he says, Ki umnam yeshev Elohim al ha'aretz. Indeed, will Elohim dwell on the earth. Hine hashemayim ushmei hashemayim lo yechal kalucha. Indeed, the heavens and the heaven of the heavens cannot contain you, will not contain, plural, the cha at the end is you. Another four-letter root that we see somewhat is shin ayin, shin ayin. It's a little harder to hear the PL vowels because of the ayin, but we can still recognize it. This verb is generally translated as to take delight in, and there's also another video touching on all the Shin Ayan verbs and their related meanings. I'll put the link in the in the description. So from Psalm 119.70, Tafas Kachelev Libam, their heart is as fat as grease. Ani Toratcha Shi Asha'ati, I take delight in your Torah. From Psalm 94.19, Burov Sar Apai Bekirbi, of the multitude of anxious thoughts which are in me, tan chumecha yesha'ashe'u nafshi. Your comforts delight my soul. So the comforts is plural, and the verb is also in the third person plural, imperfect. We also see, not, not so very often, but um, where this goes into the hitpa'el. Again, in a Hebrew grammar, strictly Hebrew grammar, it's gonna say hitpa'el, but in an academic grammar, you're going to see this other binyan hit pal pale. And I pulled that up from Blue Letter Bible. So in Psalm 119.16, Bechukotecha esh ta'asha. So we talked about this elsewhere when you have a verb root that begins with a sibilant, sh or z or tz, and you're in the hit pa'el, the sibilant sound and the t the dental t sound change places so instead of et sha asha you have esh ta asha in your statutes i would delight lo eshkach dvarecha i will not forget your word more commonly we see this root as a noun sha ashua and i've included it because it's my favorite verb in jeremiah 31 20 it talks about ephraim is he not a dear son Yelled Sha'ashuim, which is translated as pleasant child, but it's really a child of pleasantness. A cognate related root is Sadi Ayan Sadi Ayan, and it's actually only used once. It's used as a noun in Second Chronicles 3.10, and it implies images of carved work. Viyas Bevet Kodesh Hakdoshim, and he made in the Holy of Holies, Kruvim. Jerobs, Shnayim, two, Maase Tsaatsuim, works of carving or works of images, Vyitsapu Otam Zahab, and he covered them with gold. Now, this word comes into modern Hebrew as Tsaatsua, and it is related more to Sha'ashua, the thing of delight, and it's translated as toy, as you're going to see Woody telling Buzz Lightyear in Hebrew. Ata tsa you are a toy. Ata tsa So there are a few other examples of these roots, and all of them are reduplicative. When you look for the root, you're going to find out that the root for kalkel, for example, is listed as a hollow verb, kuf, vav, lamed. Shashua is going to be shin, ayin, ayin. And reduplication is very popular in Hebrew. We discussed that during the video on geminate verbs. So here are some other examples we find in Job 16.12, a verb parpar, which is translated as to shatter. Parpar is the root, the modern root for butterfly, from the idea of, of its fluttering. Also in this verse, patz patz, which means to shake, 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 
In Isaiah 14.23, we see a verb and a related noun. The noun is mitate, which means broom, and the verb here means to sweep. Another in Ecclesiastes 10, kuflamid kuflamid, which means to sharpen. In Isaiah 17.11, lesakseg, the idea of a plant growing. I did find a few that are not reduplicative, they're very rare. You have one in Psalm 80, verse 14, Lecharsem, talking about the wild pig in the forest uprooting. Also in First Chronicles 15, 27, a form with four letters, Kufresh Bet Lamed. And this is actually a pu'al. It's a passive form of the P-L. It's a present tense, you can tell by the mem, and here it means clothed, speaking of David. These two forms are presumably generated by inserting a resh in the second position related to a verb lechasem or a verb or a verb lechabel. The four-letter roots are much more common in modern Hebrew where patterns have been established, for example, adding an aleph at the beginning of a three-letter root to make a more intensive form of that same verb. I hope you're enjoying your study of Hebrew, and we'll see you next time. Shalom.